thimbles. Some saw us swear by them, while others swear because of them. Mother pus bucket. Using a thimble is so frustrating. It makes your finger feel like it comes from somebody else's hand. It's clumsy and it's just plain awkward. I feel like I heard that a million times when I was learning to use a thimble. Talk about frustrating. If it's so hard, do you have to wear one? I think you should. But you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. As a matter of fact, there are plenty of accomplished sewists that choose not to use a thimble. But there are so many benefits. Because it protects your hand and allows you to keep your hand in a natural position as you sew, it protects you from fatigue and injury from overuse. It also protects you from puncture, so you don't have to worry about getting blood all over your garment. And lack of injury means you can get more done because you can sew for longer. Not only that, but you get the sense of accomplishment that comes with vanquishing a difficult foe. Before you completely write off the humble thimble, I'm giving you a challenge to really give it a go and fight through the hard to become a thimble champion. What does it take to go from thimbles? Ugh, I hate using thimbles. To thimbles? I can't sew without one. I'm not here to blow any smoke up your hole. Using a thimble does suck at first. <laughs> Learning to use one is one of the most frustrating things I've ever done. I never used to use a thimble and I had the calluses to prove and it. And then one day I landed my dream job of making costumes for the theater. And it was my second job with this particular company and I had a mountain of hand sewing to do. I had assumed that my hard earned calluses would protect me, but after the first full day of sewing, my finger was raw. I don't know if you've ever experienced the feeling of the back of the needle going through your callus, but it's kind of like the sewing equivalent of stepping on a Lego. And so the next day, when I went to pick up that needle and start sewing, my finger was so sore that I just couldn't. And I had to have that garment ready to go on stage. I had to figure out a way to make that happen. I was so stressed out. The only thing I could think of was to use a thimble. I found a thimble, put it on, and started to sew. That was just as miserable. You know, my finger didn't hurt, but it slowed me down so much. After that, I was determined to learn how to use a thimble so I never had to go through that again. And luckily, I had people to help me because it was hard. But I can say that now on the other side, it was 100% worth it. Just like each level in a video game prepares you for the next and so on until you're ready to face the big boss, there are steps you can take to prepare you for your final fight to master the metal thimble. And here are some things that I learned along the way in order to help you on your quest to level up your thimble game. At first, using a thimble was really awkward and weird. And then a friend introduced me to a tailor's thimble. And that was a game changer for me. That was the first lesson I learned. Find a thimble that suits you. There are so many types of thimbles available today in various shapes and materials. There are leather thimbles and they can be as simple as a sheath or they can have a metal reinforcement for additional protection. Leather thimbles are probably the easiest to use so it's perfect for beginners and it can be a great way to transition up to a metal thimble. The drawback is that it isn't impenetrable, so you could still get a good poke if you're pushing hard through some heavy material. Plastic is also a good way to get used to using a thimble. They do hold up better than leather, yet they're easier to get used to than a metal thimble since they're less rigid. Metal thimbles are obviously the most difficult to get used to, but they are great for sewing all sorts of materials. And once you get used to them, you won't want to go back. You can find them in nickel, brass, and even silver and gold. Now the standard closed top thimble is probably the most recognizable. And this type is available in both metal and plastic. And it works best if you're using the top of your finger to sew. And this is a method that you often see used by quilters and embroiderers. There are also several ring styles of thimbles and those are also available in metal, plastic, and leather. A tailor's thimble is a thimble with an open top and is typically available in metal and sometimes plastic. So both the ring style and the tailor's thimble require sewing with the side of your finger. And that's good because it means better hand mechanics and you can hold your hand in a more natural position which protects you from overuse injuries. Ultimately, thimble choice is a personal one and you just need to find the one that works best for you. And the best way to do that is to just try them all. They're not that expensive and you can always borrow from a friend. You can always start with one style and move up to the next as you get used to the feel. 
ask the Thimble and Plume community what advice they would give to somebody just starting out using a thimble. And Braun here agrees that finding the right thimble for you is really important. My favorite is a Taylor's brass thimble. And that's perfect because that was probably the most common thimble used in Renaissance Germany. As a matter of fact, the earliest concrete evidence we have of metal thimbles in Europe are open top thimbles. A wealth of these bronze tools were found at the site of Corinth and date to the 9th to 12th century. Another thimble was discovered at Ephesus and is dated to 100 CE but they believe that that one actually originated in China and was brought over. The next thimble shows up in the Mediterranean area and that one is dated to the first quarter of the seventh century. Now these early open top thimbles vary in height from short enough that you could consider them a ring type thimble and tall enough that they look like modern thimbles. We also have evidence of closed top thimbles. Since early thimbles were cast using copper alloy, Germany's wealth of copper gave the brass workers of Nuremberg a plentiful supply. And by the late middle ages, the city state was renowned for its brass thimbles. It was around 1530 when advances in brass founding enabled Nuremberg's thimble makers to create a superior thimble by stamping sheet metal into a die to create the familiar shape. Now that you've chosen your style of thimble, it's very important that it also fit well. One of the biggest problems I experienced when learning to use a thimble is they just didn't fit well. Too tight and it will sit too high on your finger and it will just fall off. And too big and it will just wiggle and wobble about and eventually fall off. I cannot emphasize enough how much a well-fitted thimble is an absolute game changer. When you place it on your finger, it shouldn't feel tight, but you should still be able to move your hand about without it falling off. An open top thimble should sit so that the opening is right about at the tip of your finger with your nail projecting above it. If you have long fingernails, you'll probably want to use an open top thimble. If you're shopping for a thimble, most likely you'll have to do it online. So you need to know how to choose your correct size. To do this, you're gonna measure around your middle finger right at the base of your nail. And the best way I found to do this is to cut a thin strip of paper, tape it around your middle finger of your sewing hand. Make sure you're placing it right at the base of the nail. Cut it off and then you're gonna measure the strip and make sure you're using millimeters. And this is your finger circumference that you can use when you're shopping for thimble. You will also see them listed as single digits like seven, eight, or nine. Unfortunately, there's no international sizing standard for thimbles, so an American seven will be different from a Dutch seven. But a reputable seller should list the circumference or the diameter that goes along with the sizing. Another way that they're listed is by small, medium, and large. And usually small has a circumference of 42 millimeters, medium of 51 millimeters, and large 56 millimeters. I'm gonna put a link in the description because we carry nickel and brass thimbles in our Etsy shop. And of course, we are always happy to answer any questions you have. For an even more comfortable fit, you can shape them. Thimbles are perfectly round, fingers are not. So when you get a new thimble, take it and hit it with a hammer a few times. The goal is to make it more oval shaped like your finger. Try it on and then adjust as needed. It doesn't take much, so go slowly and use a fairly light touch. So now that you've chosen your thimble that suits you and it's well fitted, it's time to use it. The proper way to use a thimble is to have a proper hand position for sewing. It's very much like holding a pen. Your hand is held in a very natural and relaxed position. From this position, place the needle between your thumb and index finger. Notice how the back of the needle will want to naturally rest against your middle finger. This means that the pressure of the needle going through the fabric is going to push the back of the needle into the flesh of your middle finger. And that's why you wear a thimble on your middle finger of your sewing hand. And as the back of the needle rests against the thimble, it will naturally fall into one of the divots. And that's what keeps it from sliding along the metal. Allowing your hand to stay in this natural, relaxed position as you sew means less fatigue. Okay, so you've chosen a thimble that suits you. It's well fitted and you know how to use it. And it is still going to feel very awkward. And the best way to beat this awkwardness is to just keep using it until it's no longer awkward. The first step to getting used to it is to just wear it. I want you to wear it for a few days and I want you to wear it while you do other things. Wear it while you're making your morning coffee or, or when you're playing with your new kitten. Just keep wearing it until you no longer notice it. And honestly, I found this to be the most frustrating part. 
but it's like in a video game. It's not often that you go up against the big boss and beat it on your first try. You respawn and try again over and over until you figure out what it takes to beat it. Beating the final boss is all about practice and it's the same with using a thimble. Keep using it. Fight the desire to put it away and keep sewing with it on. And soon you will sew like the champion I know you are. And since you've made it this far, I have a bonus tip for you. Sometimes it can be difficult to pull the needle through the fabric. It just seems to slip through your fingers as you pull at it, and no matter what you do, you just can't seem to hold on. So you can pick up a package of rubber thumbs like they use in offices, or I found these ones specifically for sewing on Amazon, and I really like them. You place them on your index and thumb, and bam, better grip. This could happen for several reasons, and one of them is that you are using the wrong needle for the type of fabric you're sewing. So make sure you're using the correct needle by watching this video here.